the first feature we're going to cover is related to TI bundling. As you know, this TI bundling is, you can say it's now becomes like standard features as it's almost enabled by default for any vendor or even operator. And it's like mandatory, one of the mandatory features that must be enabled. But in today's session, I'm trying to try to cover it from different perspective. Also, I would like to add one, one additional point related to something called advanced TI bundling, which is need some optimization sometimes need some to be enabled from for some vendors uh, and so on and also you need just to understand how this kind of advanced TTI bundle is working so initially initially let me explain how TTI bundling in general is working in the normal case scenario if you look into that part here in the in the left in the normal scheduling scenario the the, the resources will be scheduled right in in one millisecond so all the, the data will be sent for example within particular TTI from the, the unit B, the UE in term of uplink to the unit B will be transmitted in this particular TTI. But once the unit, the unit B trigger TTI bundling, and in general, how TTI bundling is being triggered, TTI bundling actually is been based on uplink uh, SNR, PUCH SNR. So, for example, if this uplink SNR is falling below a certain configured threshold, let's assume that the threshold of the SNR is 10 dB and now the user is having seven or six db or whatever so the unit will decide that this user should enter the tti bundling state because he it, it will assume that this user are having a bad radio condition so the unit B would like the users to enter the tti bundling state in order to get a better performance in terms of uplink how this can be done the unit B will send our configuration message to the user asking him now you are in tti bundling state so now you can start using the scheduling of the TTI bundle. So in general, how the scheduling of TTI bundle is being done, as you can see in the figure, assuming now that the, before the normal scheduling, the user was transmitting one, one, for example, transport block here. Now this one will be retransmitted or being sent by, by the users. Like the same data will be sent four times in four consecutive TTIs as shown here, but with, with different redundancy version, but the same, same data will be, will be transmitted. Accordingly, this will, will be reflecting in the decoding process from the unit B side. This is, will be like a diversity so that you will have higher energy per bit, per, per, per bit. So that this means you are improving your uplink coverage because you have a better decoding from the unit B side because you are sending four different data and four consecutive TTIs. Sorry, same data and four, uh, and four consecutive TTIs with different redundancy version. So this will improve the redundancy performance and will result in higher energy per bit. So this is can improve the uplink coverage by around two to three dB. Now the idea here, as you can see for the, the acknowledgement part, it will be sent after four milliseconds from the last from the last transport clock we being set. For example, here you'll, you need to count one, two, three, four. So this is, will be like you assume from the first packet till the last, it should be around eight milliseconds. While in the normal scheduling, it will be sent here for the acknowledgement. So this is can be you can assume it as one of it can increase the delay a little bit, but usually the TI bundling is more triggered for the very bad users, especially or edge users for the uplink. So this will have a good performance. The second and the most important part as well. Now we explain that in terms of coverage, you will have a bit a higher energy per bit, so it will improve your uplink path loss, uplink coverage by around two to three dB, sometimes up to four. But still, you have also some capacity gain. How this kind of capacity gain can you can observe this capacity gain based on TI bundling? In case of, of without TTI bundling, if the user is already in the, in the in the edge coverage and he having a very poor performance on the uplink, so in this case he will need to have this kind of RLC segmentation. He is having more, he have less energy now or have less power because he cannot send the complete packet in one one time because he have limited uplink uh, coverage. So the user will 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 will, will the RLC layer will do the segmentation into, for example, as you can see here, four, four buckets, for example, instead of one, it will be sent in four. And the idea that, and it will be sent in four, as you can see in four transport log, each one will be sent in different TTI, but this different data is being split. Why, why here the splitting is being done? The splitting is being done to increase the power per, 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 per pet or per, per resource block. So you will, you will have a much better coverage whenever you do a segmentation, but also the segmentation is increasing or decreasing the capacity. Because for each one of those, you will require a, a BDCH allocation, right? Then you'd be which TTI or which time he can send this particular data. So you need a four BDCH allocations. And also for each one of those, you will write the unit, your UE will require to send acknowledgement on acknowledgement for each of those uh, packets which being sent in the TTI. So this is also increasing the hard feedback. Instead of one, one hard feedback, you have hard feedback. 
But in, in case if the TTA panel is being triggered, as and the E node B already instructed the UE to, to enter the TTA panel state, what will happen? In this case, the user know that there is a better performance or better decoding and even having higher energy per bit. So because he's in TTI binary state, so he will send a complete RLC. For example, it was SDU, BDU. It will send the same one without any, without, without any segmentation. So this will result again in, in sending this same TB, but only transport clock and for TTIs. So this one will result in less BDCH allocation. So it can have improvement in your BDCH allocation in case of the segmentation point of view and also will have one hard feedback because for those four TTI, for those four transmitted data then same data and four consecutive TTI it only require one hard feedback so in this case you will have a better performance in term of the improving capacity because you will not have any RLC segmentation anymore and also one of the things that can be triggered out of the DI bundling whenever the users enter the TI bundling state he will be out of the DRX the, he, he will exit DirectX directly, so he will not be in DirectX anymore. So this is all can have some reflection even in latency or even in the quality point of view. So this is, this is the three main gain of the TTI bundling. And just a side note, usually the TTI bundling is supporting by FDD. It can be supported by TDD in very specific cases and depend on the, as mentioned here in the below comment, depend on the subframe configuration. Usually we use the sub configuration too which is SA2, which is called a uh, subframe assignment, which is uh, as a location at 622, means six for downlink, two for, two for uh, uplink, and two for uplink. Six for downlink and two for uplink. And two can be guard band or can be like having a dynamic between uplink and downlink. And the, the idea that usually that the TTI bundling require a four TTIs for uplink, right? That's why you will have a limitation TI uh, bundling. That's why it's, it's only being supported by this kind of configuration, which is zero, one, and six. But usually those kind of co configuration is not being used. Usually use uh, the subframe configuration too. And also doesn't work with the semi resistant scheduling for the same So this is just uh, an extra comment. Now let's move forward to see how can you verify the TTI bundling from the UE logs. And secondly, what, what it means by advanced TTI bundling. Before going to the advanced TTI bundling or how to verify in general TTI bundling from the DT logs, I would like to just recall one point. One of the limitations of the DI bundling, once the DI bundling state is being triggered, you will see if you read this, if you go to this from 3GPP, we can see that if the parameter of the DI bundling provided by high layers is set to true, means the DI bundling is being triggered, then the modulation will, or modulation order, MCS, will be set to two, and this is, will, will be like QBSK, which means you have only uh, two bits can be transmitted and not link, and the resource blocks will be limited to maximum three resource blocks. So in this case, what it means, but once the abandoning is being triggered, so assume that the user is doing a vault call and he have a blank data or he need to do something on the blank. So your uplink data will be very limited in this case of the TI band. So this was the, using the TI bundling, this was co causing a limitation uplink through. But in, in now in the, after the release, starting from release 12 upwards, the, the 3GPP like introduced this capability for the devices. Which is if they use support, like if the users is support, is the user to release 12 and he will be supporting this, like in the new capability, you can check this kind of, of information, which is called no resource restriction for TTI bundling release 12. This means that you support TTI bundling relation without resource allocation restriction. This kind of re resource box will not be any more applicable for those re re release 12 users. And usually we call this as advanced TTI bundling. And also there is one additional functionality which can be done. Here is called e enhanced hard pattern FDD release 12. This means that here for the use support something called enhanced hard pattern for the abandoned operation for FDD. Usually that the in case of retransmission uh, in the normal TTI bundle, it requires 60 milliseconds for the normal users to uh, re make the retransmission. But in case of the enha uh, enhanced hard, it will only require 12 milliseconds. So this is, can be reflected also in latency improvement. And I will show you an example from the logs, how to verify and how to check uh, this kind of capability and how to check whether advanced advanced or advanced or an advanced or enhanced harp is being uh, enabled or not. So let's see. So here I just like here, we'll just check how advanced the abandoning or the abandoning general is uh, to confirm from logs whether it's being activated or not. And the second point, 
that will explain what it means by enhanced hard pattern release and I will check also how to confirm the logs. The first two commands here is just quoted from 3GBB document which I just showed to you in the previous slide. So initially what will happen if the first first of all the inner view to check whether the user is achieving the TDI bundling condition which is again based on the user's uplink radio condition which is SNR. So assume that he's not achieving so he will not be triggered so the inner view will decide that this user is not a candidate for TDI bundling so no TDI bundling will be triggered. But instead in case of the TDI bundling is being triggered then the inner view will check the capability of this user whether he's supporting this enhanced heart pattern release 12 or not. If it's not supporting then the users will use the old process, which is related to the binary release. So the heart RTT is 60 milliseconds, as I mentioned, and the maximum uplink PRBs will be limited to three. So those particular users, and even if the feature is not being enabled, will having a limitation in even, even uplink and will having kind of latency increase. So this is kind of the drawback. But in case if you, the capability is being supported and this feature is, or this, parameter is being enabled and this is you need to check with your vendor maybe they have a different perspective but this is just from 3gbb if it's being enabled so that the abandoning this means to the abandoning release 12 is being supported so the hard rtt will reduce from 16 to 12 milliseconds and now you can get even more than three resource blocks for the uplink allocation and in the right figure this is how to, conf to confirm in, in general how the abandoning is whether the is being triggered or not First thing you need to check under uh, the RSC configuration message will be sent from the uh, inner B to the UE. Under that RSC configuration message, you will find something called radio resource configuration dedicated as shown here. Under that, you need to check the MAC uh, parameters, which is MAC main configuration. You'll find if it's being triggered, this one will be true. If the other in general not being triggered, this one will be false. This is from the normal HARC. But in case of enhanced HARC, as you can see here, also it will be the same. If the user supporting is fine after MAC, under MAC configuration B, 1020, we'll find that there is additional something called eHark pattern release 12 is being supported, and this is indicate that the user now is falling under this category. So you know, he even can have a better latency and has no limitation anymore in the uplink uh, resource block resource resource block allocation. So this can also give a better performance in terms of uplink through.